Hi, welcome to Dr. Paul's Marathon Training Blog. I'd like to welcome you to my favorite running store in Santa Monica, top to top. Let's get down to the basics for training for a marathon. Consider the average person weighing 150 pounds is going to be putting anywhere between three to four times their body weight, 50,000 times during the course of a marathon. Because marathons have a high failure rate of 85%, meaning that only 15% of marathoners redo a marathon and the primary reason is because they've been injured. So to keep you from being on the sidelines, this blog is focusing on how to keep you training injury free. So to consider that the most important part of your running apparel is in the shoes, let's get started there. When you do walk into most running sh shoe stores, there's probably a hundred different shoes to choose from. Let's simplify. I've designed a Dr. Paul twist test that gives you the ability to determine right away if the shoe is going to be right for you. Consider that most of us have low to medium arches and most of us have already put at least 100,000 miles on our feet by the time we're 20. This is the highest consideration I would say is to make sure your shoes are going to give you all the support that you need for 50,000 plus steps during the course of the marathon especially because it's on a pavement. So let's look at some of these motion control and stability shoes. To do the Dr. Paul twist test, you're going to take the rear foot and the toe part of a shoe and twist them in the opposite direction. When you do that, you want to see minimal movement through this midfoot area. It's usually going to be indicated with a darker density material, sometimes even a plastic piece underneath this midfoot area. We always want to maintain that flexible toe box, but we want to see the shoe have the strength through this rear foot and midfoot region. Here's another good motion control shoe where we take the toe and the heel area, twist them the opposite way, no bending through the midfoot. A little bit of plastic there, strong, I mean flexible toe box. Another good stability motion control shoe, we again see that there's minimal movement through the fore, this rear foot and midfoot area, but with a flexible toe box. So this is why these are the shoes that we see most marathoners in, and we recommend that they be in so they don't have these common running related injuries. Now when it comes to a cushion shoe, that's usually reserved for the really good runners that are going to probably be three to four hours in doing the marathon, and or a high arch person. When you do the Dr. Paul twist test though, the shoe is going to bend very easily in this midfoot region. And so this again is not going to provide that much strength for all the forces that are coming down on the foot. Another type of cushion shoe is going to be this one here. Again, when we twist the opposite way and you see the flexibility in the midfoot area. Still has a flexible toe box, but a lot of times it'll bend right into the midfoot as well. And that's what we don't want to see with a good, strong motion control and stability shoe. So that said about the footwear, I'd like to tell you, keep having fun, and I'll see you on the next blog.